have been involved in the inner workings of uh, U.S. national defense policy. How will AI change the business of war? Is it ultimately a, a positive right now, um, helping us be more accurate? I'll say this. It'll sound cynical, but I'll say it. I genuinely mean it. The best thing about the Western militaries is they're not at war, and so they're incredibly slow, right? There is a real war in the West, and that's in Ukraine and Russia. And I've now been many times to, to Ukraine, and I've provided some advice to and and I obviously want want a, I I I'm, I think that however imperfect we want to preserve democracies in our world, they're just better and safer to have democracies than autocracies. It's certainly not ones that are busy invading the na- neighboring country. So what's really going on in Ukraine is a vision of what's happening in the future. You now have, and again, I, I, I can I'll avoid my own history with respect to this, but a year ago I could go to the front. And I could hang out and, you know, joke and so forth. Uh, the weather was nice. You know, the food was good kind of a thing. Uh, now you cannot walk during the day or the night because there's a traffic jams of your drones and enemy drones for both sides on top. And it's essentially a death zone. So the ubiquity of drones means, in my view, that tanks and artillery and mortars go away as weapons of war. I'm a sufficient optimist that I believe that once countries figure out a way to make this ubiquitous notion of drones for their own defense, it'll become impossible to invade an adjacent country. Because once the tanks roll, what you could do is just bomb them with drones and a drone costs $5,000 or less and the tank costs $5 million or less. So the kill ratio is such that the the tanks just don't make it and you can make enough drones to pull it off. Um, The current drones are not particularly AI sophisticated But if the U.S. government, in its infinite stupidity, were actually to do something right and approve the Ukraine aid pact, it would give us another another year, right? So to my current phrase publicly is, let's get another year here. And in that year, you're going to see asymmetric asymmetric innovation that can allow a smaller government, which is a new democracy trying hard to counter the moves of a large and established uh, 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 invading power. Um, I suppose the cynic would say, well, that means it's going to get harder for the U.S. to invade neighboring countries. And I said, well, that may be true, too. But I, when, having now seen real war as opposed to what you see in the, in the movies, and I have lots of drone death videos that I will not show anybody, um, it's really horrific. And we want to do everything we can to stop war. And I think that there's a scenario where AI makes it actually much less likely. There will certainly, with AI and um, empowered weapons, be far fewer collateral damage because of the targeting. And again, this is this is lost in the various critics of what I and others are doing. The biggest casualties of war are not actually the soldiers, but the civilians. So war is horrific, and it should be, if you have to have it, do it with the professionals and don't kill kids and women and old ladies and bomb the buildings like the Russians have been doing with their tanks, which upsets me no end. Those are called war crimes. I had Palmer Lucky on the stage last year uh, describing what he's doing with Anderil, and that was his key point, that we're, precision is everything. Uh, and being able yeah, to- and, Palm, and Palmer's company has done a fantastic job. They're one of the great U.S. leaders in this space. Yeah, for sure.